So this is going to be uh, the last uh, lesson about spiritual gifts that we're going to uh, be looking at here um, in this series. But uh, Romans chapter number 12, 1 Corinthians chapter number 12. And uh, while there are, um, there are churches and, uh, you know, different movements of uh, Christians that are seeking after uh, the Holy Spirit to manifest himself um, uh, through miraculous signs, wonders, um, tongues, uh, things of that nature, <clears throat> we are not. We are looking for the Holy Spirit to manifest himself in our lives through ministry gifts, and we've been looking at those. We've been emphasizing the gifts of ministry because the Bible emphasizes the gifts of ministry, and I'm going to show you that here in just a little bit, and, and then we're going to be moving on uh, in 1 Corinthians to chapter 13, and the emphasis is put right there in chapter 13 in uh, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And uh, so Romans chapter 12, and uh, look at verse number 6. It says, Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given unto us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy uh, according to the proportion of faith. So prophecy being one, we've looked at that. Or ministry, uh, let us wait on our ministering, ministry being serving. Talked about being a servant to the Lord and uh, to one another. Or he that teacheth on teaching, that would be the gift of teaching. Or he that exhorteth, we talked about exhortation and uh, what it means to exhort one another as we see the day approaching. We exhort through the word of God. We are not just simply encouraging or making people feel good, uh, feel good about themselves, whatever situation they're in. We are trying to push people push one another, um, lead one another into a closer walk with God and to serve the Lord. And, uh, or he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. And so that's what we talked about before, giving and uh, that gift that the Lord would have us, all of these the Lord would have us all to uh, do. And uh, whether we are specially gifted by the Holy Spirit to do so or not. And so we're going to look now at he that ruleth with diligence, and, uh, and then also tonight, mercy. So we're going to look at two tonight. doesn't mean we're going to go double long or anything like that, uh, because I think they go together, um, a, a ruling and mercy. And uh, ruling, another word for that is administration, and uh, just uh, the ability to organize, the ability to uh, lead others, and uh, get things done, get the job done. Now turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and uh, look at verse number 28. First, uh, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 28. And uh, so this uh, spiritual gifts, we, we saw that there are ministry gifts. We've been focusing on those. There are also sign gifts, miracles. There are also gifts of men. Um, here in verse number 28, it, it kind of gives a... Uh, conglomeration of them, okay? And so it says, and God has set some in the church first, apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings. And then he goes on to say helps, governments, diversities of tongues. And so governments would fall under this uh, um, uh, administrations, okay, or ruling. And uh, having uh, having order, and uh, there's a book that was uh, written. I'm not for sure how long ago. It's called Order in the Church, and uh, you know that uh, a church should have order, and that comes from First Corinthians chapter 14, verse number 40. Let all things be done decently and in order. Okay, God wants for His body uh, to be controlled by the Holy Spirit. And one of the signs of the Holy Spirit control is not being out of order and chaotic and, you know, craziness, but actually a sign of the Holy Spirit is being in control or being ordered, okay? And so God wants us to be ordered. God wants us to be directed by the Holy Spirit. So we're going to talk about that tonight. So uh, if you'll look here. In verse number 29, 1 Corinthians 12, 29, it says, Are all apostles? And the answer is, no. Now, we did have a lesson about that in Sunday school, and so somebody said, yes. 
because actually the lesson was that uh, the word apostolos actually uh, means sent ones, and we are all sent, but in this case, this, uh, this case, the word apostle here is actually talking about like Peter, Andrew, James, John, Bartholomew, Thaddeus, and you know, so those guys. Uh, and so all are not uh, apostles in that sense uh, of the 12, but uh, we are all ambassadors. We use that word ambassadors in, uh, in our Sunday school lesson there. But here, are all apostles? No, all of us are not one of the 12. Are all prophets? And the answer is also no, all of us are not, are, are not prophets, even though we are to prophesy. We may not all have uh, that gift of prophecy that, that we spoke about. Um, are all teachers? No, not everybody has that gift. Are all workers of miracles? No, uh, or have all the, get, all the gifts of healing? Um, no, obviously not. Do all speak with tongues? And uh, what are biblical tongues? That's a whole different lesson uh, that comes out of chapter 14, um, uh, 1 Corinthians. But do all speak with tongues? No, I don't speak Navajo, not one iota. I just, that was Greek. Okay, anyway, um, I, <laughs> do all interpret? And the answer is no. But covet earnestly, and, and this is what I want you to get, verse number 31. But covet earnestly, and that means desire uh, intently, the best gifts. What are the best gifts? What are the best gifts? Well, I think we've been looking at the best gifts. Okay, because all are not apostles, all are not prophets, all do not do miracles, teachers, no, um, uh, healers, no, but everyone can, what? Everyone can stand up and speak the word of God to somebody else. Everyone can uh, have mercy. Everyone can uh, lead others in, in an orderly fashion, you know, uh, lead one another. Everyone can be a servant. Everyone can and, and do those things that we've looked at, uh, the ministering uh, gifts. And, and so that's what I want to encourage you uh, tonight with is that um, let's covet earnestly the best gifts. And notice here, it, uh, this last phrase, it opens up to chapter number 13 because he says, and yet I show you a more excellent way. And uh, in the next chapter, chapter 13, he's going to show the, the better way. He's going to show the way that God is going to really change the world. He is going to transform the world, and uh, it, it would not be through uh, miracles and prophecies and, and you know, uh, healings and things of that nature. It would be through charity. All right. Uh, so here, uh, administrator or ruling that we've looked at is the spirit-given ability to serve God in a way by try, arranging things, uh, ha, uh, uh, administering toward a goal, and being able to encourage others towards that, being able to encourage others towards order, uh, and, and, and to undertake a common mission. And, uh, you know, that's what all of these spiritual gifts are geared to, is that we would be like a functioning body. That's what the church is, the body of Christ. And so that we would be a functioning body working together to complete the mission of the church, which the mission of the church is reaching the world with the gospel. And the mission of the church is missions. And so there's going to be a whole lot of talk about that uh, coming next week uh, about uh, missions. And so here's a message for the administrator, uh, chapter 12 of Romans. Verse number eight, chapter 12 of Romans, verse number eight. And, uh, you know, I say if somebody here would, was, would think and say that I, I believe that the uh, Lord has gifted me with this. I'm a very organized person or I uh, uh, help others to be organized. Um, here's the message uh, of that. Verse number eight, Romans 12. It says, uh, he that ruleth with diligence. And uh, what God would want is for somebody who is administrating or leading others or organizing to do it with diligence and be diligent. And I think every Christian should be diligent. And uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, it says, with all diligence, 
add to your faith virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, okay, all of those things. Everything in the Christian life, really, we should do with diligence. What is that? What is diligence? It's speed. It's doing something quickly. Um, not like to and fro quickly, but uh, not delaying. Have any of you kids ever heard that to delay is to disobey? Okay. All right. <laughs> well, adults as well, to delay is to disobey. Now, we have so many... Uh, examples from people in the Bible who delayed to do something and it didn't turn out well. Uh, and so uh, we as Christians should not delay to obey the Lord. We should not delay to serve God. We should immediately do so. And uh, one of the false thoughts that we have is that, uh, well, I, I, I've got to wait to serve God until a certain time. Well, no, we should actually serve the Lord right now. We should serve God right now. Now, we may not be able to serve God in the greatest capacity that we would want to, but we need to serve the Lord right now. We need to live for God. We need to allow the Lord to rule in our heart. We need to allow God to work in our lives. We need to do so now. Uh, ruleth, or ruling, is the Greek word. I'm not going to try to say it. But anyway, it means to stand before, to preside, to practice, to maintain, uh, or to be over. And so to rule, it means those very things. To stand before, to practice. So let me ask you, are you practicing your faith? Are you practicing your faith? Are you living out your faith? Uh, that's, a, that's a good uh, question that we all should ask ourselves. And really a Christian is being a Christian is as much, um, as much about being as it is about doing. I don't, I don't want to make it sound like that, you know, we're saved by works or anything like that. We're saved to good works. We are saved for serving the Lord. Okay, do you understand? So being a Christian is just as much about being and doing. Okay, and so the Lord would have us to do. And uh, so looking at administrating or ruling, we should first rule our own spirit. Let's look at some verses about that. Proverbs 25, 28. Because so many times people would like to rule everybody else and tell others what to do. I think I have this gift of administrations. I'm good at telling everyone what to do. No, that is not the gift of administration. That is arrogance, okay? Okay. And so uh, we should learn how to rule our own spirit. Amen? All right, Proverbs 25, if you look at verse number 28. It says, He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Do you have rule over your own spirit? Well, we should seek to have rule over our own spirit. Seek to have rule over our tongue. Seek to have rule uh, over our thoughts, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 tells us that. Look at Proverbs 16, verse number 32. Proverbs 16, verse number 32 says, He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. So here, in the same, same verse, connected together, ruling our spirit and anger are linked together. And so what it tells me is that if we're angry, we're out of control. Amen? If we're angry... We are out of control. We are not being controlled by the Lord. We're not being controlled by the Holy Spirit. And really, we're not being controlled by ourselves. We just, poof. there's a little booklet um, that we would give out in the jail. It's called uh, Flying Off the Handle. You know, like an axe, and the axe head flies off the handle. And, uh, you know, that's what, I, out of control, just, 
flying off the handle. And uh, so we need to have control, the Holy Spirit controlling. All right, Proverbs 6. Proverbs 6. Look back to Proverbs 6, verse number 6. Proverbs 6, verse number 6. All right, it says here, Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer and gathereth her food in the harvest. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard, when thou, thou arise out of thy sleep? Yet a little sleep. I went a little bit too far, but anyway, let's finish it. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep, so shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and thy want as an armed man. And so here it's talking about controlling yourself to the point of being like the ant. The ant can control herself. The ant can, uh, doesn't have to have somebody, you know, cracking the whip and saying, do this, go, go, work, work, get up, you know, don't be lazy. And uh, so uh, controlled here, and we see that. God has, think about it, God has control over all sorts of things in his realm, in, in, this, uh, in the kingdom uh, that God has made. But one thing that, uh, uh, and it's the highest Creation. If we talk about, you know, in the created order, that the last thing God created was man, and man is the one that God has so many problems with, right? I mean, you know, the molecules, the atoms, the elements, God has no problem with those. Did you know that? I mean, they do exactly what they're supposed to every time. All of those simple things that uh, were the very first created, right? But man... He has this, the most problems out of it. Why? Why does God have the most problems out of man? It's a three-letter word. That's sin. All right? This is simple, but uh, anyway, I need it. We need it. Even if it's just my family, we need it. All right? So, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Proverbs 17, verse number 2. Proverbs 17, verse number 2. <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. I've ingested about a pound of dust today, so pardon me. Better is a dry morsel. This is Proverbs 17.1. Better is a dry morsel and quietness therewith than a house of sacri full of sacrifices with strife. How many of you have had dr a dry morsel? What is that? It's like a old dry piece of toast <laughs> and uh, it says it's better to have that and have quietness than a house full of sacrifice anyway it wasn't part of it a wise servant shall have rule over his son that causes shame and shall have part of the inheritance among the brethren and here it's talking about uh, a son having control over himself and here is also talking about a wise servant having rule over that son. And uh, then one more verse, Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. Ruling our own spirit. If we don't know how to rule our own spirit, how do we rule anyone else? The Bible talks about uh, a pastor ruling his own house well as, as well. So these are very important things here. Um, first, uh, I'm sorry, Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. It says, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. You see how these things fit together? It says, let the peace of God rule in your hearts. And then it goes on to say, which also ye are called in one body. So a body is made up of members, and the members, individuals, 
individual Christians, we all need to let the peace of God rule in our hearts. We all need to allow God to rule in our hearts. And then it goes on to say, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. And so now he's talking about the word of God ruling in your life. So we allow the word of God to rule in our life. That makes us fit to where the word of God or the, uh, the peace of God rules in our heart. It makes us fit to where we can then teach and admonish one another. Notice verse 16. It says, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. So really, we're not fit to teach one, anyone. We're not fit to administer or rule until we allow the word of God and thereby the peace of God to rule in our hearts. So that is administrator. Um, now we're going to look here about tempering it with mercy. Tempering uh, ruling with mercy. Uh, mercy is the spirit-given uh, desire to put another's needs first. And if we want to try to lead anybody, whether it's an uh, older sibling leading a younger sibling, or it's a teacher leading a class, or students, or parents leading children, um, we need to be able to temper uh, ruling with mercy. A spirit-given desire to put another's needs first by sharing their sufferings, sharing in their sufferings with joy and sympathy. And uh, so to have mercy is to have pity upon, to have compassion upon. We're instructed to have compassion. Jesus had compassion. Uh, he had compassion upon people who were in tight spots. He had compassion upon people who were in, uh, in sin. He had compassion. We need to have compassion and be merciful. Romans chapter 12, verse number 8. And uh, it says, He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. To have cheerfulness as we do so. To have mercy should make us happy. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Think about it. To have mercy upon somebody should make us happy, should make us blessed, because we know that if we are merciful, we're going to receive mercy as well. Jesus was merciful, like we said. God is merciful. I want to show you a couple of verses, okay? Isaiah 61. Let's look at Isaiah 61, verse number 1. And uh, this is a verse about Messiah. And of course, Jesus is the Messiah. Okay, Isaiah 61, verse number 1. It says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening uh, of the prison to them that are bound. Those three things there, to uh, uh, bind up the brokenhearted is an act of mercy. To proclaim liberty to captives, to release those who are bound is an act of mercy and uh, the opening of prison to them that are bound. And, uh, and so uh, Jesus, he is merciful. He is merciful. We should be merciful as well. La Lamentations chapter 3. Lamentations chapter 3. Look here, it talks about God's mercy. God's mercy usually comes, well, mercy has to do with withho uh, withholding a judgment or withholding a punishment. And so mercy comes at a time when there is judgment. All right, Lamentations chapter number 3 and 22. It says, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. God, he is merciful. Are we merciful? Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Jesus was merciful unto us. He is our high priest. Look at Hebrews 2. Hebrews 2, verse number 17. Jesus is our high priest, and he is a merciful and faithful high priest. A high priest who knows our frailties, knows our uh, our shortcomings, knows that we 
uh, you know, we're just dust. All right, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 17. It says here, Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in all things pertaining to God. He understands us. He understands who we are. He understands that we are flawed and that we need mercy. So administration has to do with our mind. It has to do with organizing. But mercy has to do with our heart. It has to do with caring. And so sometimes people can be good at getting a plan rolling but not caring about the people. The Lord wants us to care about people. And plans are good. Plans should be followed. Plans should be made. And and all of those things are important. But God, he wants us to know that, that mercy is very important. Because God desires mercy and not sacrifice. And, and so the Lord, He is merciful. Uh, grace is God's attitude towards the lawbreaker, giving man what does, He does not deserve. God gives to those who are undeserving grace. He gives the gift of eternal life. He offers it freely. Mercy is God at, God's attitude towards those who are in distress, not giving us what we do deserve knowing our frailty, knowing uh, that we are but dust, and knowing that we, uh, we certainly do need, need mercy. Is God merciful to people that, uh, that may not accept that mercy or may uh, you know, turn around and uh, uh, not extend mercy to someone else? Yes, He is. He is. And God being merciful, he, uh, that's who He is. And he wants us to be merciful as well. He wants us to know that. And God wants every one of us who are saved to practice the gift of mercy. Not just uh, to have uh, this spiritual gift, and, and, uh, but God wants us all. And so why does the Lord want us to practice this gift? Let's look at a few verses and we'll be done. Okay, Matthew, chapter, uh, Matthew 5, verse number 7, uh, quoted it a couple of times. And that is, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. So we give mercy, not necessarily to receive, but he does make a statement here, a truth, and that is, if you give mercy, you will receive mercy. Well, who will you receive it from? (laughs) Absolutely. You will receive mercy from God every time. So if we're seeking to be merciful just so someone else will be merciful to us, that may not happen, but we need to be merciful nonetheless. Uh, Titus 3, if you look here, Titus chapter 3, verse number 5. Titus 3, uh, verse number 5, it says here, um, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us. Salvation is the, the sheer mercy of God. Salvation is the mercy of God by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. And so, to be saved, we need mercy and to to receive mercy. Uh, To pray, uh, to pray, mercy is important there. Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 16. Hebrews 4 and verse number 16. It says, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy, and find grace to help in time of need. So when we pray, we pray to receive mercy. You know, one of the saddest things is when somebody does have mercy extended to them and they don't receive it. When when mercy is offered and mercy is not not received, that's that's I mean it's equally sad when someone has grace, they're a, a gift and it is not received. And so God, He gives us that gift of, of mercy daily, daily, that we can come boldly under the throne of grace and obtain mercy. Uh, to live, Colossians 3, verse number 2. Let's look at that, Colossians 3, 2. We were over there just moments ago. Let's go back to Colossians 3 and verse number 2. 
If somebody could find it in my Bible, I would appreciate that. Okay. All right, Colossians 3, verse number 2. i got to get back there to where Colossians is. All right. Yes, it is after Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians. And there it is. All right, Colossians chapter 3. And verse number, did I say verse number 2? I did. Set your affection on things above, not verse 12. Makes more sense, okay? Verse 12. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. Put on. So, to live. To live. We need to put on these things. They're very important for us to have in our life. More important, uh, as we see here, let's read it again. Uh, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. You know, those, those things in God's economy are more important than prophecy. I think the greatest of these three are what? Faith, hope, charity. Okay? And so uh, these things are more important than Miracles, they're more important than, um, you know, uh, 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 like I said, prophecies, healings, miracles, uh, those things, revelations, dreams, visions, all of those things. This is more important. This is more important. These are things that we need in our life. And uh, mercy to witness. And if some have compassion, making a difference. That's really what it's all about, being a missionary um, and taking part in missions is having mercy. Take, having compassion upon people making a difference. 